Our guest today is Dr. Nahid Bhadelia. Uh, Nahid is a colleague here at Boston University at our School of Medicine, and she's also with the National Emerging Infectious Disease Laboratories, the NEEDLE. And I'm going to ask her what she thinks the future of infectious disease might look like in a post-COVID world. We've seen a trend in the last 20 years of, of you know, new emerging infectious diseases that seem to take us by surprise every single time, even though they're happening with quite the regularity at this point. Um, and, and some of this has to do with the fact uh, of how we interact with the natural world, you know, and, and We've doubled in, in population over the last 40 years on the face of the earth. We are um, interacting with milieus um, and reservoirs, natural reservoirs uh, of microbes and animals that have been in balance with each other, and now we're inserting ourselves. So last 40 years or, or so have seen just every year, a year and a half, a new pathogen on the international scene. Look at the end of Ebola. Um, we don't have to go all the way back to 1918 influenza. We can only look back to even five years ago into that microcosm um, to see what happens in, in the tail end um, of, of devastating epidemics. There is not a natural end to epidemics. We, we don't know whether it's ever going to end or whether this pathogen will become part of the tapestry of infectious diseases that we encounter every season, whether it will become part of the background risk that all of us face. At the end of the Ebola epidemic, the other thing that happened was um, there was a culture shock of people going back to normal about um, cautiously taking those steps back of opening schools, of, of opening businesses, of opening their economy, but also the secondary health impacts that it had on people. We're already seeing that with COVID-19. Coming out of it, I think we might find this secondary ripple of health impacts that, um, that we should be looking for even now to mitigate. Um, and then you'll find tertiary rings of impact on, on society and economics. You mentioned that these pathogens keep emerging with, with, with great frequency and, and regularity, and yet we get surprised. Uh, might that be different the next time around? I really hope that we, uh, we take the lessons from this epidemic. You know, I wrote this article at the end of the Ebola epidemic where I quoted Camus, and he said, you know, there are as many plagues as wars in history, and yet plagues and wars take people equally by surprise, you know, and what's happened in the last 15 years is, um, and this has been said by others, we tend to swing in this cycle of, of panic and neglect, you know, um, where we respond with great energy and, and, and an immense amount of resources. And when there is no outbreak, uh, we ignore all that stuff. Um, we drop the funding for it. And one hopes that this time around, that changes. You, you had this wonderful quote about plague and war, and they both take us by surprise. But we prepare for war very differently than we prepare for plague. I don't know if we do. I think that unfortunately some would say we, we deal with them too similarly, you know, and, and so some of the greatest amount of funding that's been um, done in emerging infectious diseases is actually through Department of Defense. You know, there's a huge investment in, 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 in pathogens like uh, Ebola and other things that were seen as um, health security issues. We've dealt with diseases like national security threats, and in some way they are. But I think that the thing that that equation misses is, is what we've discovered is that it then just uh, focuses on security aspect, but, but not the human rights aspect of ensuring everybody has access to care. And we saw that play out in, in resource limited settings, and we see that play out in COVID-19. Um, communities within our own country that, you know, that are traditionally disadvantaged and don't have as much health literacy, access to public health resources or health care resources seem to be at the highest risk. In having lived through and studied these various episodes, uh, what gives you hope? Epidemics bring out the worst and the best in people, you know, and, and I've seen that in almost all outbreaks that I've been part of. Uh, people become threatened, they become worried, and it's selfish, it's, you know. But then there are people who see a fire and they take a bucket and they run towards it, you know, and, and every epidemic brings those people out. And, and this has done that. And, and in some ways, um, epidemics help us because they bring out those extremes in, in humanity. Um, they sort of put, at least give us hope that there is this 
higher level that we can all aspire to. And what's your greatest fear? That people um, don't follow the better angels of their nature, and and you know one and, and rather only think of their own. You know, as we are, we are all scared, but they only if only think of their own sort of potential loss and and potential gain. And I worry that we are losing uh, a segment of our population because public health has been politicized. Uh, my my worry is that the more public health is politicized for public gain, that's going to impact our outbreak response.